I'm sorry, to Eclipse. In Eclipse, you've got to make sure that you have Hibernate tools installed. How do you know if you have if you have Hibernate tools installed or not? Well, if you go into Window, you should have a section called a perspective. How to open a perspective. And these are all the perspectives. Like I have the Java EE perspective, I have the debug perspective, I have the regular Java perspective. Well, one of the perspectives should be, and if you go into other, it should list it, should be Hibernate. If you have Hibernate tools installed, then you will get the Hibernate perspective. And that's the one that I need you to be in in order to do the stuff that we're about to do. Basically, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to create Java code out of our database. So we, at this point, we should already have a database. Eh, it's probably not totally well done. There will be some changes to it later on, but there should be minor changes. At any rate, if you change the database, this is the process that you should take. The one that I'm about to show you, this is the process that you should take in order to recreate all the Java classes out of the database. <coughs> and basically what it's going to do is let's take a look at the database the Timex database if you guys remember the Timex database has three tables department, employee, and timesheet this is what the department table looks like for departments this is what the employee table looks like five employees. Okay? And we already know by looking at the model in the wiki if we take a look at the domain model from the wiki we see that timesheets has a relationship with department and also has a relationship with employee. At this time I have not added the payment. That's something that I'm I will be simulating later on as a modification of the database. But right now, and that's based on all my entities that I figure out out of my problem statement nouns, I figure that this is gonna be the database that I have. So I have timesheet, I have employee and I have department. And Hibernate, which is an object relational mapper, and let's look very quickly at an object relation mapper online, just very quickly, even though I covered this in the previous video lectures. But basically, it's a computer software. I, uh, that converts data between incompatible type systems in object or into programming languages. In other words, it's, it converts relationship or um, relational data, which is what we save in a database like MySQL, relational data, data that is related between tables, and objects, object data, which is what we deal with in Java. So Hibernate is one of the many object relational mappers. And uh, I'm surprised I don't have it listed here. Well, at this point, there are so many object relational mappers. Um, list of object relational mapping software. Look at this. And it depends on the type of language that you use. There's several object relational mapping frameworks created for it. 
all the different languages. So in specifically for Java, look at all the ones that have been created. So the most common ones, for instance, Eclipse Link, Hibernate, MyBadis, which is used for Oracle databases, or an iBadis, which is a spin-off of that one. Also, um, Top Link from Oracle, Open GPA, Java Persistence API, from the Apache Software Foundation. All these are object relational mappers. Now, which one are we going to be using in this class? Hibernate. Hibernate is the, I believe, is the easiest one for very simple databases, especially databases that have been created from scratch, thinking about relationships, and it's in a well, normal form. Okay? So, Hibernate, which is also open source, is the object relational mapper that we're going to be using. All right, so given that, how do we get the Hibernate tools if we don't have them? Uh, they should be part of the JBoss. So if you go into jboss.org tools, you should be able to find in here the Hibernate. Let's take a look at Hibernate tools. This is the update site. So you add this URL to your Eclipse installation to reach the solutions update site. So let's do that. So you can go into help, install new software, add, you call it Hibernate Tools for Eclipse Indigo. Did you have an install already? No? Okay. Then you so I should edit that one. There it is. Download JBoss or JBoss Tools updates Indigo. So now it's going to go online, it's going to fetch all the children of that site, the software that you need. A whole bunch of software. Oops, sorry. Um, so we need the data services. So Hibernate Tools. See that Hibernate Tools is part of the JBoss data services. Cloud development. No, we don't need cloud development. Business intelligence. We don't need that. Application development. Under the application development, just select the Hibernate Tools. So just pretty much. Let's see if I can. Filter, Hibernate. There you go. See? I filter just Hibernate tools, and we want that, 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 four things. So it's Hibernate tools under JBoss Web, Hibernate tools under Data Services. Hibernate tools under application development and Hibernate tools under a bridge JBoss whatever and uh, tools here Hibernate tools here Hibernate tools okay and then we click next I have to post that URL. says the operation cannot be completed because it's already installed. See, that's what I'm saying. I already have it installed. So, but but you will go through this process and you will be downloading that stuff. 
already installed, so it's not going to install it all over again. Uh, but anyway, so once you download that stuff, it will ask you to reboot Eclipse. So you reboot Eclipse, and now you should see this open perspective, window open perspective, other Hibernate. Hibernate is the perspective that you need to be in. This is the Hibernate perspective. Once you do that, then you should get this new icon that allows you to create Hibernate code generation configurations. Okay? So, very quickly, let's generate the code for Timex out of the database. How am I going to do that? Let's create a brand new project. New project. Let's keep it a Java project. It's not going to be a web project, you know. The, the stuff that it will produce, we'll, we will eventually import it into our web development project. But right now, we're just interested in creating the source code in Java out of our database tables. So it's going to be a Java project. Let's call it uh, Timex. Sorry, Java project. Next. Let's call it. It's thinking. Timex underscore Hibernate. Okay. It's going to yeah default to JRE whatever JRE you, I'm using JDK one six um, yeah create separate folders pretty much just leave all that stuff the defaults finish and here it is it creates as you can see the icon tells you that it's just a plain Java project source folder nothing in the source depending on the JDK and that's it. So now, when you right-click on Timex Hibernate and you go to New, um, New, where is it? I'm going to, are we in the Hibernate? Oh, we're in the Java, I'm sorry. We are in the Java perspective. Watch out with that. You gotta make sure that you're in the Hibernate perspective. If you are switched, you're gonna be like, "What? Mine doesn't have that stuff." So let's switch back to the Hibernate perspective. Right-click on the Timex Hibernate, and when you go to New, notice that the menu changes because in the Hibernate perspective, you're only interested in Hibernate new stuff. Okay? So we're gonna come. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the Hibernate console configuration. The console configuration is basically a bunch of settings that will tell our project, hey, there is this database called Timex, and this is how you can find it. Once you create that console configuration, then you can actually create the Hibernate configuration for your project. That's the one that says, hey, we're going to have this database with tables, uh, department, employee, timex, timesheet, I'm sorry, timesheet. So it will create that configuration and it will also tell the project how to log in into the database, how to uh, query the database, stuff like that. So it's basically configuration stuff that allows the project to communicate with the database. And we will also, third and last, we will also create the Hibernate mappings. Hibernate mappings are XML files that translate the database tables into um, objects. 
objects in our classes uh, with the attributes, the getters and setters, and all that stuff. Basically, the Java beans. <coughs> and we can also do reverse engineering, which means it will create all the source code for us out of the database. So let's start with the Hibernate console configuration. And and if and if eventually this doesn't work for you, if it doesn't work out for you, no big deal because you can always go back to the manual thing. And the manual thing is creating manually all the data all the um XML Hibernate mappings and creating the configuration. You know, all that stuff it's I'm sharing it with you through timings. In fact, the author of the book share it with us in the Timex project. Okay, so here we are, creating the hybrid console configuration. We're going to be calling it Timex Hibernet Console. Timex Hibernate Console. Okay, the project is Timex Hibernate. We're going to do the core. We're not going to do annotations or G JPA, nothing of that nature, just the core. Plain, simple stuff. Um, the database connections. Guess what? It's going to be a MySQL. So let's create a new database connection. It's a MySQL type. Uh, I'm going to call it the Timex MySQL. Okay. Uh, the database is called Timex. Make sure that the, the driver is the MySQL JDBC driver. Should, it will be selected by default anyway. Uh, the database is called Timex. So make sure that you modify that, Timex. It's JDBC MySQL local host because it's running locally on my computer. Here it is. MySQL port 3306. We already know that. The username is root and no password. Make sure you test the connection. You should get a ping, ping succeeded if you get to connect to it. Uh, okay. So that's it. So we have created the Timex MySQL database connection. Uh, what else? in the console. Let's go into options. The database dialect. The database dialect, make sure it's, you, you select MySQL. Uh, no naming strategy, no entity resolver. Class path, mappings, gone. I think that's it. That's pretty much it. So you finish and we have just created the Timex Hibernate console. So now we should go into the Hibernate code generation configurations. Where is it? Timex Hibernate, create a new one. And now we're gonna create okay, so now we're gonna create a configuration file. Configuration file it's for the Timex Hibernate project. It should be put under the SRC folder. That's the source. Stands for source. Next. And then we're going to give it a name. Session factory name. I wonder if we don't need to give it a name. Um, but database dialect. Yes, we're going to have to select that the dialect is MySQL. The driver class is going to be com MySQL JDBC driver. The connection URL. Oh, it's asking for all this stuff all over again. I'm wondering why is 
it asking for all this stuff all over again? So it's localhost colon 3306 database is timex the default schema schema stands for database it's going to be timex the username is going to be root no password oh we could have created a console configuration through okay we could have done that too so we're going to do a finish and here it is it created our hibernate config xml which I like to see it from the XML perspective. Yes, questions? Oh, yeah, you're right. Localhost. Ooh. Good catch. So basically, all it did was what? Create an XML file saying, hey, we're going to create connections to a database using this driver, it's a Java driver, using this URL, it's a JDBC URL, logging as this guy, going to this schema or database name, and we're going to be using this dialect. That's a Hibernate dialect. Basically, it's telling them you have to speak MySQL. That's it. That's the Hibernate configuration. So now let's go and create the high XML mappings. So XML mappings. So we're gonna add we're gonna add a package. We're going to create, let me see, where am I? Oh, it must be already an existing package. So before we do the hibernate mappings, we're going to have to go into our source and create a new package. Remember, we want to be able to create our um, domain classes inside a package. Typically, the name of the package is something like com, whatever, whatever, timex, which is the name of the project, and then models, or domain, or whatever you want to call it. Because those are that's the package that will contain the domain model classes. Uh, so you switch to the Java perspective, you right-click on source, create a new package, and let's call that package com timex hibernate dot domain. Finish. Alright, so now we switch to the hibernate again. And um, we are going to create a new XML mapping. So there it is. See? We already included that com timex hibernate.domain package. Okay, so we go next. The wizard creates new hibernate XML mapping file with skeletons. Okay. Well, at this point, we've got to have already the classes. So let's add the classes. Whoa, it's going through all the classes in my project. So let's see, employee. Yeah, from, that's from a different project, though. Yeah, we will have to have we will have to have our classes created already before we do the hibernate mappings. That kind of makes sense. So sorry about that. Sorry about the confusion. Let's generate then the code. 
How do we do that? We have to hibernate reverse engineer. So before we do the XML mappings, we have to do reverse engineer. So reverse engineer, so what is it asking? Yeah, we're going to create a new hibernate reverse revenge XML, reverse engineer XML, and then under the Timex hibernate source. Okay. Um, oh, the console configuration. We gotta name the console configuration that we just created, which is called Timex Hibernate Console. So let's refresh. So it's communicating with the database, and it says, "Oh, I found the database. The database has three tables. So you wanna include the department." employee and the timesheet. Remember, we're doing the reverse engineering right now. Okay? And this is typically what you will be doing every time that you change your database tables. Not your database. If you change your database to some other database, then you will have to all over again create the hibernate configuration file. But if you change the database tables only, then this is what you will do, the reverse engineering. So you finish, and notice what it did. It created the Hibernate Reverse Engineering XML, which is basically just saying, hey, um, I noticed that there is a department employee and timesheet that match in the Timex database. All right, so now, Let's do the, the, the reverse engineering. So we go into our Hibernate code generation configurations, and we're going to create a brand new Hibernate code configuration. Let's call it, I don't know, Timex code configuration, code generation configuration. Okay? What's the console that we're going to be using? The console is going to be the Timex Hibernate console that we created earlier. Where is it going to be the output directory? Well, the output directory is going to be where do we want all the classes? We want them to be inside Hi Timex Hibernate source and in fact, we want them to be inside our com timex hibernate domain package. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, we can reverse engineer it from JDBC connection. So let, why don't we do that? Let's do that. So let's delete the output directory and let's do the, the package is com that timex hibernate dot domain. And where is the revenge revert reverse engineering XML? We're gonna use an existing one. It's right here. That's the one that I want you to use. No particular strategy. It's going to detect one-to-one -one associations, many-to-many -many tables, blah, 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 all that stuff. Let's go into the exporters for a second. We're not going to do EJB annotations. We're not going to do Java 5 syntax. Okay, we want to do the Java classes, domain code. Okay. You want to do the domain code. Refresh. No, that's fine. So we, the only exporter is going to be Java code. Under this package, under this reverse engineering. What am I missing? What am I missing? Oh, okay, the 
output directory yes you're right I have to specify the output directory because it doesn't know what project to put it into source timex hibernate source all right so now we can apply it so it saves it it saved the timex code generation configuration and this is what we're going to be using every time that we want to generate our classes all over again out of the new database tables in case we change our database tables and believe me they will change we run it okay let's refresh launching timex okay it's doing something it's launching timex what is it doing launching timex code generation configuration so it's wow it's going to <laughs> it's going through every single project in my workspace. Why? Oh, it's launching build before launch. So this should be much faster for you if you don't have that many projects open like I do. Okay, so finally, here it is. Timex Hibernate has the source code, has the com Timex Hibernate domain package and inside it has created department.java, employee.java and time. If we open department.java you're going to see that it is a POJO, a plain old Java object. Basically it's just a Java bean, it's a plain class called department that implements serializable. We need it to be implemented serializable. It will tell you that it has been generated by the Hibernate mapping to Java with two fields, department code and name. Yes, indeed, that's what the department looked like. Department code and name. And then it created the constructor, the empty parameter constructor and the full parameter constructor. And it created the getters and the setters for each one of the properties. And it will do the same for the employee. Employee ID, name, blah, 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 all that stuff. And for the timesheet. Pretty cool. Like I said, anyway, Timex, the source code that I share with you guys, already have that under the Timex model package. It already has a department of Java, employee the Java, timesheet the Java. And you could also generate this from scratch if you wanted to. Oh, the hibernate mapping. So now we have the classes in Java, POJOs. Why are they call it POJOs? Because they're plain object plain old Java objects. There's nothing in external in here that says, hey, this is from Hibernate. It's a plain old Java class. And we also have the Hibernate configuration that tells it where to map this stuff to. So now we're ready to create the Hibernate mappings, which are the XMLs that tell it where to go to. So let's generate those so we're going to go to timex hibernate new make sure you're still in the hibernate um, what is it called the hibernate perspective new hibernate xml mappings okay so add the classes and the packages so we already have the package it's com timex hibernate domain. We're going to add the classes. Here it is. No, nope, that's 
that's not it. Let's type employee. Here it is. From the com timex hibernate dot domain folder from the timex hibernate project on the SRC folder. That's the one. Okay. Next. Oh wait. I should add the other class, the department. Department Hibernate, here it is. And then add the other class which is timesheet. This guy. Next. So now it says this wizard creates new Hibernate Maps file skeleton. So see how it paired the department class with the department Hibernate XML, Hibernate Mapping XML file. Next. It will tell you what it's about to do. It's going to create a file here. It's going to look like this. This one is going to look like this. And this one is going to look like this. You can say, yeah, go ahead. And there they are. So let's take a look at the department hibernate mapping. I like to see it in the XML. It's a hibernate mapping. All this stuff is just XML, and it's all part of the hibernate mapping data. Um, what is it? Data dictionary. Hibernate mapping is for this class, so it has to be a fully qualified Java class or department class, and then it will map this table. And this table is the name of the table in the database. And it has an ID. An ID typically is a primary key. Called the department code. That's the name of the field in the table. Which, it's going to be a string. Eh, not a very good idea. Typically what you want to do is you want to be able to have your primary keys as integers. My fault. I will change that eventually. Um, down the road. Um, I will change my primary keys to be integers and to be actually automatically generated. That's how it should be. The column in the table is called the parming code. So this is the name in the class of the field and this is the name of the column in the table. If they are different it will detect and it will make sure that, you know, they map to each other. Generator means, you know, it's not going to be automatically, gen no, I'm sorry, it's going to be assigned, which means uh, the, the developer is in charge of generating it. Like I said, typically it's not a very good idea to have the developer or the system generate the primary code. And then there's another property called name, which is also a string and the column is name. Very simple stuff. Department Hibernate Mapping. Let's take a look at a bit more complicated one. The employee one. The employee one, this is the class. This is the table. Notice that the primary key is an integer. It's called employee ID. And it's also assigned. Which means, you know, the developer of the system will be in charge of assigning that not a very good idea either, but well. Property. Name, email, employee code, password, employee ID. It's a string, string. This employee code is a character. Notice that it automatically detected all this stuff. Now, from where? Where did it detect? Well, it went to the employee table. And if you take a look at the table, it says, you know, employee ID is an integer, and name is a string, and employee code is a character, and employee manager ID is an integer. Okay? So you got all that stuff from there. And then finally, the timesheet. The timesheet hibernate mapping is a little bit more extensive now.
this one times sheet ID, it's an integer. Notice that it's an integer, not an int, an integer. The column is times sheet ID and the generator is assigned. Where did it get that? From here. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's that means it's auto increment. Okay. My bet. I forgot about that. So assign means yeah, it will automatically be generated. Okay, so it will be automatically generated for the timesheet, for the gener for the uh employee ID and for the department code. Hmm, I wonder what's going to be for the department code. Okay. So at this point, what we have is we have all the POJOs, Java Beans. We have all the Hibernate mappings. We have the Hibernate configuration and the reverse engineering Hibernate configuration. Okay. So all we need to be able to test this stuff is we need a utility class that is going to be a singleton. Singleton means there will only be one and only one instance of this class because it's going to be the one that is going to manage the connections to the database very well so if you guys dig into your Timex the one that I share with you guys under the util you will find something called the hibernate util class so I'm going to copy that one. Let's put it in a separate package. So let's create, let's go back to the Java perspective, and let's create a new package called com timex hibernate dot util. And I'm going to paste in there that class. Let's take a look at that class. That class that class basically what it does is it's a singleton, so what does that mean? It means it has a well point a well known point of entry called the get session factory, which will return a variable. And this variable is a static variable that when the Hibernate Util class gets loaded by the Java virtual machine, it will create a static section that it will say Okay, let's create a new configuration and build a session factory with that configuration and let's put it under this variable. That's it. So it will be created once and only once. From then on, everybody will go into the get session factory, which is the well known point of entry. Give me the session factory, what is it going to return? That one variable that was created when the class was loaded by the Java Virtual Machine. So basically everybody's going to get the same session factory. And you see all these errors because we do not have the libraries that we need. We don't have the Hibernate libraries and there's a whole bunch of jars that we depend on. Now who knows what those libraries are? Well. Uh, the author of the book already shared with us all the libraries that we need in our project. I believe they are under the LIB folder of the zip that I share with you guys. So if I go into Rapid Java, there's a library. These are all the libraries that we need. Indeed, there's a Hibernate 3. That's the one that has all the Hibernate framework. Okay? 
I also share with you the MySQL connector. That's the one that has the MySQL JDBC driver and the dial uh, no the dialect, I'm sorry, the dialect is in the Hibernate 3. Okay? So we need to include all these jars inside our project so that we don't get these error messages. Hey, I don't know where session factory is or configuration is. So let's do that. Let's go into Timex Hibernate. Let's go into the build path. Configure the build path. And then under libraries, let's add external jars. So we're going to go into our Rapid Java library and we're going to select all these. Maybe that's too many, I don't care. I'm going to select them all. Save it and see all of a sudden all these errors that we had are gone. Okay. So, what have we done so far? We have created our Pojo's Java Beans, our Hibernate mappings to each one of the tables in our database. We have created our Hibernate configuration that tells us that tells the project how to connect to the database, and the Hibernate reverse engineering, which tells us how to generate the classes out of the database tables. We have also created the Hibernate util that allows us to connect. Uh, or create connections to the database through Hibernate. So we're ready to test this stuff. To test it, I am going to create a third package. And I'm going to call this package the com timex hibernate dot test package. And what I'm going to put in there is I'm going to put a class, a Java class that has main. If you guys remember, main is the well-known point of entry for a standalone Java application. And this main will actually use the Hibernate Util to connect to the database, bring all the data, and present it all out into the console. We have created that. In fact, the author of the book already created that such a class. And this is it. It's called Hibernate Test. So I'm going to just copy it and paste it. into my package. Let's open it. I'm going to resolve the dependencies, format the class, and here it is. Okay. So it's a plain old Java object. It's a class called Hibernate Test. That contains the public static void main. Well, known point of entry for a stat for a standalone Java application. What do we do here? Basically what we do is we say we're gonna create uh, the same stuff that the that the Hibernate util did, which is create a new configuration and configure a build session factory. This is all classes from the Hibernate framework. Okay? So we created something called a session factory. This is going to be runs once, so it doesn't really matter that we create it ourselves. Then we open a session. So the session factory opens the session, and we're going to call it the session. And then we're going to tell the session to begin the transaction. This is something very important, because starting a transaction allows us to do a whole bunch of stuff in the database, and if we do not commit the transaction, it will not affect the database. We can actually roll back. But if we do commit, then it will save it in the database. So pretty much what we're doing is everything that we're going to be doing against the database is going to be in memory until we commit the transaction in the session. So we're going to begin the transaction. The transaction is we're going to call it TX. And then what do we do? We create our own 
variable of the department type. Okay? And then we tell the session, hey session, get me a department, and here's the class that tells you what it looks like with the primary key IT. The equivalent to this in the SQL world will be select star from department where department code equals IT. You execute this in the database, this is what you get. But this is how you do it in the object-oriented world. So behind the scenes, the session, which is a hibernate object, is saying, oh, you want me to get. That means I'm going to have to build a SQL, an equivalent SQL, and query the database. And it's going to be against the department table. That's why you're giving me the department class. And it's going to be this primary key. Okay? So you pass the class and the ID. And then what do you do? You're going to print it to the console and say name of I for IT equals and then look at this. You're actually manipulating the result. What is the result of that getting out of the session? Well, it's going to be an object that you're going to cast it into a department because you know you're getting a department. You put it in your variable. And then from then on, you can just reference the values like if they were class attributes. So you can say get name, get department code, all the stuff that is in the department class. get department code, get name. See that? Those are the getters and setters for our for our department class. Now, there's another demo here. Get all the records from the department. How do you do that? Well, if you do it here, the equivalent will be something like this. Select star from department. You execute it, you get all these. How do you do it in the object-oriented world? Say, session, I want you to create a query. What is the query? From department. And give me back a list. So you get back a list. You're going to call it the department list. And then when you use a for loop, a regular for loop, used many times in Java, to traverse through the list. So you go from i equals 0, i less than the department list size, i++, plus plus. what are you going to do? You get the first element, the sub-zero element. Get the sub-zero element. And then you know that it's going to be an object that you can cast into a department and you save it in your ver local variable. And then same thing, you're going to go and print out to the console, hey, this is the department name and this is the department code. Have you built any query whatsoever? Not at all. Well, sort of. This is what it's called a hibernate query much more simple, much more compact than structured query language, which is this one. And the benefit is, you are getting objects. So you can actually reference the results as objects. Let's take a look at the last demo. It's get all the pending timesheets. How do you do that? Pending timesheets. Let's take a look at the timesheets table. 
That means give me all the timesheets that the status code is equal to a P. So it will be this one and this one and this one. Three of them. Those are the pending. So how do you do it in SQL? In SQL you will say, okay, select star from timesheet where status status code equals P. You execute it, and there they are. Those are your three timesheets that's in the SQL and the relational world. How do you do it using Hibernate in the object-oriented world? Again, session, create a query. What query? From timesheet, where status code equals question mark. Question mark will be treated as a parameter. So, the next thing you do is to set your parameter. What is going to be the type of that parameter? Well, it's going to be a character because status code, according to here, let's see, timesheet, edit the table, status code is a character. Oh, okay. So that means that this parameter, question mark, will be set through the set character. And there's several sets. In fact, if you take a look, look at all the sets that you have. Set big decimal, set big integer, set boolean, set cache, set date, set double. These are all the different types that are available to for you to set values of those parameters. In this case, we're going we're gonna to use the set character. The sub zero means the first the zero base, the first parameter. And there's only one actually. This question mark. And then what are you going to um, set it to? You're going to set it to status code. And status code is this character variable that we have created, initialized with P. And then what are you getting back? You're getting back a list. And you're going to put it in this list, the timesheet list. Cool. And then what do you do? Well, you can actually traverse, and uh, I don't know why I did not complete that. Maybe I erased it. <laughs> did I erase that code? I could have. I traverse through the list, and then what I do, I just print out all the timesheets that are pending. That's weird. Okay, let's copy it very quickly out of the department one. So I'm going to go through the timesheet list, size, and it's going to be timesheet. Not department, but timesheet. And then I'm going to be printing out, I don't know, I can just print out um, how about if we print out the employee ID that owns it, right? And also, the department code, which tells me where is it going to be charged to. All right. And then finally, the last demo it's getting a single record. So we have seen getting a single record, getting all records, getting specific types of records, list of records, and then getting a single record. This is a timesheet, getting the timesheet one. Okay, so we want to get the timesheet number one, this one, which the equivalent will be in the 
relational database where it will be select star from timesheet where timesheet ID equals one. You execute it, and here it is. This is your timesheet one. Uh, I don't think this is called timesheet ID. What is it called? Get timesheet ID. Yeah, here it is. Is from get. Get employee ID for that period ending date. All right, so let's execute this thing. Oops, I think I erase here set character, set character position and the value are being passed as parameters. All right. And we're getting back a list. So now we don't have any errors anywhere. We can run this thing. You want to see it? So all we have to do is right click on the Hibernate test, run as a Java application, which it will know that it requires a main, which we have. And everything will be put out into the console. And here it is. It did not work. OK, no appenders could be found for logger. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's right. Hibernate uses log4j as the logger. And it's something. As you can see, it says, please initialize the log4j system properly. What we're, what it's asking is for this file. And, and you guys can find it under your Timex web that I share with you guys. It's the log4j properties file. So I'm just going to copy it and put it under the SRC folder and paste it. Basically, um, what it's saying is, you know, everything will be logged into the console and also into a file called timex.log. So everything that happens uh, being logged as a warning will be put into the console, that's the standard out, and into a file called timex.log. It's a good thing when you want to be able to trace what happens with your system when, when it executes. Okay, so let's try this again. Hibernate test, right click on it, run as Java application. And now what it says, no configuration found. Configuring blah 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 blah. Basically there's an hibernate mapping exception. There's an unknown entity called com timex hibernate domain department. Oh, wow. Okay. So, let me see. It's saying, I'm finding this hibernate mapping called department. Here it is. And there's an unknown entity hibernate domain department. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a second. This is what's going on. The problem is in the Hibernate test line 25. So let's take a look. Where is it? Here. It cannot find that department. Or I should say the Hibernate mapping for that department. Who is in charge of knowing that? The Hibernate configuration. And indeed, the Hibernate configuration doesn't know anything about that mapping. So my mistake, we have to tell the Hibernate configuration where to find the Hibernate mappings so that it knows how to map them from classes to database tables and vice versa. So 
this is what it's looking for. Basically saying add these mappings. Okay. So now it's going to look for a resource called department.hbm.xml. Now, this is not going to work still, but we'll see why it will not work. Let's try it again. Hibernate test. Right click on it. Run as a Java application. And now we get a different error message. What is the error message? It's saying the resource department HPM XML is not found. So the, now it's the actual file that it cannot find it. Why? Very simple. Because Hibernate Configuration XML is under the root, the SRC. So it's going to look under the root for that file and you won't find it. Where is that file? That file is actually under com. Timex hibernate slash domain slash and then the name of the file. And the other two will be found in the same place. Sorry. My mistake. It's not front slash, it's backslash. Okay, so now let's try it again. Hibernate test. Right click on it. Run as Java application. And here they are. Uh, so the first thing that it did was name for IT equals information technology. And the second thing it did was row one accounting, row two customer, this loop. Then it bombed. Where did it bomb? In Hibernate test line 42. Right here. Yes, because it's called timesheet list, not department list. Duh. Okay, timesheet list. Sorry about that. Which I'm casting into a timesheet. See, I was getting it from the department list. The department list contains departments. When you try to cast a department into a timesheet, it says, class cast exception. I cannot cast a department into a timesheet. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Okay, so let's try it again. Run as Java application. There you go, finally. So then it went and grabbed the timesheet list that are pending and it said number two, charging IT, number four, number five, two, four, and five, which I believe is correct. Um, oh, sorry. Yep. 2, 4, and 5 are the pending ones. And then finally, timesheet with ID 1 is from employee ID 2 for an end date of 2006, August 19, which is this one. Employee 2. Okay. Finally. So, Just to recap, what have we done? We have actually used Hibernate tools to create a whole bunch of XMLs and Java classes that would allow us to use 
any database in our project through objects. That's basically what we have done. 